the first migration to Abyssinia, Ethiopia. The series of persecutions started late in the fourth year of prophethood, slowly at first, but steadily accelerated and worsened day by day and month by month, until the situation got so extremely grave and no longer tolerable. In the middle of the fifth, fifth year that the Muslims began to seriously think of feasible ways liable to avert the pain, tortures meted out to them. It was at that gloomy and desperate time that Surah al-Kaf, the cave, was revealed comprising definite answers to the questions with which the polytheists of Mecca constantly pestered the Prophet. It comprises three stories that include highly suggestive parables for the true believers to assimilate. The story of the companions of the cave implies implicit guidance for the believers to ev evacuate the hoped hot spots of disbelief and aggression pregnant with the peril of enticement away from the religion away from the true religion. The young men said to one another, and when you withdraw from them and that which they will worship except Allah, then seek refuge in the cave. Your Lord will open a way for you from his mercy and will make easy for you your affair, will give you what you will need of provision dwelling. Next, there is the story of al qidr the teacher of Arabia and Moses, in a clear and delicate reference to the vicissitudes of life. Future circumstances of life are not necessarily the products of the prevalent conditions. They might be categorically the opposite. In other words, the war waged against the Muslims would in the future assume a different turn, and the tyrannous oppressors would one day come to suffer and be judged to the same tortures to which the Muslims would then put were then put. Furthermore, there is the story of Abdul Qurnain, the two horned one. The powerful ruler of West and East, this story says explicitly that Allah takes his righteous uh, servants to inherit the, the earth and whatever in it. It also speaks that Allah raises a righteous man every now and then to protect the weak against the strong. Surah Az-Zumar the crowds went then was then revealed, pointing directly to migration and stating that the earth is spacious enough and the believers must not consider themselves constrained by the forces of tyranny and evil. Good is the reward for those who do good in this world and, earth, and Allah's earth is spacious, so if you cannot worship Allah at a place, then go to another. Only those who are patient shall receive their rewards in full without reckoning. The Prophet had already known that Ashamar Negus, king of Abyssinia, Ethiopia, was a fair ruler who would not wrong any of his subordinates, so he permitted some of his followers to seek asylum there in Abyssinia, Ethiopia. In Rajab of the fifth year of prophethood, a group of twelve men and four women left for Abyssinia, Ethiopia among the immigrants were Uthman bin Afan and his wife Rukia, Rukia, the daughter of the Prophet. With respect to these two immigrants, the Prophet said, they are the first people to migrate at the cause of Allah after Abraham and Lot. They sneaked out of Mecca under the heavy curt curtain of a dark night and headed for the sea where two boats happened to be sailing for Abyssinia, Ethiopia. Their destination news of their intended depart departure reached the ears of Quraysh, so some men were dispatched 
in their pursuit, but the believers had already left Sheba for towards their secure heaven to secure towards their secure heaven where they were received warmly and accorded due hospitality. In Ramadan of the same year, the Prophet went into the Holy Sanctuary uh, where there was a large host of courage polytheists. Including some notables and celebrities, suddenly he began reciting Surah al najm Asar, the awe-inspiring words of Allah descended. Unawares upon them, and they immediately got stunned by them. It was the first time for them to be shocked by the truthful revelation. It, it had formerly been the favourite favourite trick of those people who wished to dishonour revelation, not only not to listen to it themselves, but also to talk loudly and insolently when it was being read so that even the true listeners may not be able to hear. They used to think that they were drowning the voice of Allah. In fact, they were piling up misery for themselves. For Allah's voice can never be silenced. And those who disbelieve say, listen not to this Quran and make noise in the midst of its recitation that you may overcome. When the unspeakably fascinating words of Allah came into direct contact with their hearts, they were entranced and got oblivious of the materialistic world around them and were caught in a state of full attentiveness to the divine words to, to such an extent that when the Prophet reached the stormy heart beating ending, so fall you down in prostration to Allah and worship him alone. The idolaters unconsciously uh, and with full compliance prostrated themselves in absolute God-fearing and, and stainless devotion. It was in fact the wonderful moment of the truth that cleaved through the uh, obdurate souls of the haughty and the attitude of the scoffers. They stood aghast when they perceived that Allah's words had conquered their hearts and done the same thing that they had been trying hard to annihilate and exterminate their co polytheists who had not been present on the scene reproached and blamed them severely. Consequently, they began to fabricate lies and calumniate the Prophet, alle alleging that he had attached to their idols great veneration and ascribed to them the power of desirable intercession. All of these were desperate attempts made to establish an excusable justification for their prostrating themselves with the Prophet. On that day, of course, this foolish and iniquities, iniquitous, slanderous behaviour was in line with their life conse consecrated practice of telling lies and plot hatching. And plot hatching. News of this incident was misreported to the Muslim immigrants in Abyssinia, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. They were informed that the whole of Quraysh had embraced Islam, so they made their way back home. They arrived in Mecca in Shawal of the same year, when they were only an hour's travel from Mecca. The reality of the situation was discovered. Some of them returned to Abyssinia, Ethiopia. Others sneaked secretly into the city or went in, went in publicly. Um, but under the tutela of a local notable. However, due to the news that transpired to the Meccans about the good hospitality and warm welcome that the Muslims were accorded to Abyssinia, Ethiopia, the polytheists got terribly indignant and started to beat out severer and more horrible 
compelled siege boats and torches to the Muslims. Thereupon, the Messenger of Allah deemed it imperative to permit the helpless creatures to seek asylum in Abyssinia, Ethiopia, for the second time. Migration this migration this time was not a, as easy as it was the previous time for the for Quraysh was on the alert to the least suspicious moves of the Muslims. In due course, however, the Muslims managed to their affairs too fast for the Quraishites to thwart their attempt of escape. The group of my immigrants this time comprised eighty three men and 19, or in some versions, 18 women. Whether or not Amar was included is still included is still a matter of doubt. Now, Quraysh machinations against the immigrants. Quraysh could not tolerate the prospect of a secure heaven available for the Muslims. In Abyssinia, Ethiopia, so they dispatched to Storch and boys to demand their ex extradition. They were Amr bin al As and Abdullah bin Abi Rabia. Before embracing Islam, they had taken with them valuable gifts to the king and his clergy, and had been able to win. Able to win some of the court courtiers over to their side. The pagan envoys claimed that the Muslim refugees should be expelled from Abyssinia, Ethiopia, and made over to them on the ground that they had abandoned the religion of their forefathers and their leader was preaching a religion different from theirs and from that of the king. The king summoned the Muslims to the court and asked them to explain the teachings of their religion. The Muslim immigrants had decided to tell the 